new ones and blades and everything. And you can run AIX, IBM I, and Linux on them. So, what is actually IBM I? So that's actually the operating system of the AS400, but uh, yeah, renamed. And this built up uh, according, um, uh, by some uh, design principles. So I will talk about every one of those. Uh, um, so, first one is technology independence. That means that the I, that IBM I is not defined by hardware. It actually talks to a virtual machine interface called the technology independent machine interface. And this uh, technology independence was also demonstrated in 1995 when the system moved from 48-bit uh, KISC to a 64-bit uh, RISC system. Customers could just save their programs on the old system and move them, uh, restore them on the new system and they just they would just work. They didn't have to recompile it. So this is another, uh, another view. So you can see the IBM I runs above the machine interface, the virtual machine interface. And below that, there is the kernel called the, the software uh, licensed internal code. So first, it was written in uh, PLMP, and they rewrote it uh, because they wanted to do it in an object-oriented fashion. And um, What's also nice to know is that uh, the system already defines all pointers as 128 bit. So if at one uh, time in the future, 128 bit processors would appear, IBM I would already be uh, 128 bit enabled. The next thing is that it's, it uses an object based design. So the only uh, supported data structure at the MI level is an object. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's nice because uh, yeah, objects are atomic and you can't just, uh, it has some security uh, advantages. It brings some security advantages because, yeah, you can't just uh, treat an object as an executable and you can't just change parts of the object because, yeah, it's atomic. And uh, objects talk to each other by passing messages. So every addressable object has a message queue attached. And yeah, almost everything on the system is an object. Yeah, the only supported data structure. But it is not a fully object-oriented system because it lacks some uh, object-oriented features like these. The next thing is uh, hardware integration. The AS400 was uh, first built to uh, perform in, in information intensive environments. And with the move to uh, PowerPC, they wanted to add support for uh, Java and e commerce, business, business intelligence things. And uh, they wanted to create a balanced design with, uh, uh, with this fast processing from the PowerPC combined with uh, the high bandwidth and high performance I.O. that the, uh, the original AS400 was uh, built on. Um, also, the power processors uh, capacity is expressed in commercial processing workload. So they disregard the CPU speed and instead base themselves upon um, a transaction processing uh, benchmark. Next thing is uh, software integration. So a lot of software is already integrated in the system. That's not very special. But one thing is uh, really nice, that it comes with the modern database, DB2400. And these things are all installed um, by uh, uh, licensed programs, which you can patch with uh, PTFs. And you can uh, install these fixes permanently or temporarily. And that's also a nice thing, because this is uh, the power down sys command. You can uh, choose an IPL source. So if you uh, install patches temporary, they will be on the B side. And if you IPL your system and it seems that something uh, doesn't work, you can just uh, revert your patch by booting on the A side. And you also have a D side for tape and a C side, side for modern systems that have an optical device, so mine doesn't. 
Um, and this is uh, another thing, the single level store that's uh, special about the system. That, uh, Frank Saltis uh, developed a single level store um, uh, or uh, researched that in uh, his PhD and implemented it in the system 38. So the AS400 has this. And that means that it has a, a, a very one large uh, storage, a 46 bit address space that contains everything. And the addresses are never reused. And there is no um, process local storage like in Unix. So that uh, should speed up things like task creation, creation and context switching. And the programmer does not have access to real memory. So the virtual addressing make sure that the object is moved into real memory. So, some other environments that are available on the system is uh, PACE. This is uh, an incorporated 46-bit runtime environment uh, available inside the IBM I. Uh, one thing about the system is that it's not uh, technology independent. It does not speak to the machine interface but has a syscall interface to the kernel instead. And you can use uh, PACE from IBM I and call IBM I from PACE and do all kinds of stuff like run queries and even run X and Apache. The system also comes with a hypervisor which is support, supported by the, power, by the PowerPC uh, architecture. And you can make uh, logical partitions inside the system. So you can uh, make partitions for AIX, uh, Linux, and IBM I, and make them run uh, next to each other. Uh, they are all created and managed from the hardware management console, which I will uh, talk about uh, in the ne next slide. And you can dynamically allocate resources at runtime to these uh, LPARs. So, Management of the system is done from the hardware management console. So the, the early systems had uh, just a, an old uh, or obsol now obsolete TwinX console, but that was uh, replaced by the hardware management console because these LPARs were added. So the, the management console is used to IPL a system and uh, use uh, service tools uh, and do the LPAR partitioning. And the HMC, HMC is connected to the IBM I on a ver, uh, private uh, network. And yeah, the, the HMC and the IBM I are connected uh, to the LAN, so they are available to, to the workstations too. So, some bits, of, some bits about programming. There are uh, several languages available on the system. Some of them are uh, really old, some of them and them are a bit newer. And uh, the original programming model on the system was called uh, OPM, so for uh, RPG programming uh, and COBOL uh, and, and CL. And uh, later there were some uh, languages uh, added, but when you uh, compiled your uh, program, it uh, was translated into a, a, re a real program. Um, and this program was uh, yeah, uh, morphed into uh, a PowerPC program by the optimizing translator uh, in, the, in the slick. And the only call that was supported was a call external 